you really need that um, repetition and you need to do it again and again and again. Of course, it's uh, something about uh, maximum strength, but it's also about controlling your muscles and uh, this needs time. Yo Gorillas, welcome to the Athlete Insider Podcast by Gornation. My name is Phil and today's guest is one of the best known faces in the calisthenics scene. Somebody who teaches and gives input to millions of athletes out of there, out there in the whole world. I'm extremely happy to welcome you to the show, Alex from Kelly Move. Hello. So we finally made it. We made the interview and I'm extremely looking forward to this interview, which is a kind of special interview because we'll also announce a special project that we've been working on. But this is something for later to kick off. Who are you? How old are you? Uh, all the, the hard facts. But first of all, yeah, like who are you? How do you present yourself? I'm Alex from Calisthenic Movement. Um, also known as Kelly Move. And at the moment, I'm 36 years old. And was there another question? <laughs> uh, how heavy is always like how heavy and how, ah, how heavy. Or... <laughs> um, yeah, um, my height is like about 172 centimeters. Um, and my weight at the moment is about 68 kilograms. And I... Yeah, switch between 70, 71, and 67, something like this. Okay. So, um, yeah, what's uh, really interesting and also a question that's uh, coming later from the community is like uh, concerning your age, you're performing uh, like on a, on a really high level since years. Uh, when did you start with, with calisthenics? I started in September 2012. And... Yeah, started training uh, from this day and before I did different other types of um, training and sports like uh, parkour and tricking and yeah, martial arts for a long time. And uh, like, so, so that means that you already had like a really good uh, fitness level when you started with calisthenics, I guess. Um, but maybe you can tell us more about your beginnings. How was your uh, beginning in, 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 in the sport? Um, it started with a video of mine when, where I did parkour and uh, Sven, the other guy of calisthenic movement, um, he saw this video and saw that I was from Leipzig too, uh, which is our hometown. And yeah, he wrote me back in the days uh, via YouTube um, because there were still messages available. And um, he asked if he could come to a training of us and um, give classes in calisthenics. And I was new to the term calisthenics. So he came over, we met, and he told me something about it. And I said, yes, of course, you can give classes. That's no problem. And um, at that time when we met, I think it was in July. And after that, I was uh, on vacation in America. And when I came back, I started training with Sven. And um, yeah, it took only a little time that we found out that we both like to do videos. And so we uh, started to do videos. And I think one of the first videos that we made together was the bench. And yeah, we had very good feedback uh, of it or about it. And so we thought about doing further videos. And so everything started to grow. Uh, for the people who don't know it, what is the bench? Um, the bench, it was a video where um, you saw Sven doing some calisthenic um, exercises on a bench, like in, in a park. Um, and I was coming by jogging and I stopped and then we had a small battle um, who can do the, the nicest uh, skills and so on. And... Um, yeah, in the beginning, I left with a side flip from the bench and ran on and Sven said, what? <laughs> <laughs> and this was the story of the video. Okay. Yeah, sounds really nice. So um, Sven was doing calisthenics already before you and was kind of um, the, the guy who introduced you to, to calisthenics, if I understood uh, right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like he started in, in January 
of the same year, like 2012. Um, and he had some background in uh, training with weights um, and his uh, physiotherapy background. And yeah, he wanted to do something new because he was bored by the uh, weight training and doing all the time the same uh, things in the, in the gym. And so he started with calisthenics. That's cool. And uh, tell us more about your beginning. Like, uh, how was the, the first pull-up? Like, uh, how was your beginning with, with the basics, I guess, you started? But, uh, like, how, how easy was it for you? Or did you have, like, did you feel that you have difficulties coming into the sport? Um, the basics were pretty easy because I was training, training them already um, in parkour. Um, you... There was a, a, a technique in parkour, which is some kind of muscle up or a climb up on a wall. And we trained that um, pretty often. So I, it was in no time I learned the muscle up or I was already able to do it. Um, and yeah, it was some something like more playing around a little bit and having fun and um We didn't do those strict workout routines back in the days. Um, we had our training for the group, like I think two or three times a week. And it was the same time that we trained for, for ourselves. And yeah, we, we did a lot of challenges and yeah, some playing, like I said already. Um, so it was pretty, pretty easy in the beginning to, to learn a few things. And your ambition starting the sport and also YouTube, uh, was your goal ever to, to become a professional athlete or like was it was the goal always to be the, the content content producers that you are today? Um, no, not really. In the beginning, we just enjoyed doing it. And uh, when we find out or found out that, um, that we like to do videos, we started doing them. And um, I think in 2014, when I re remember it right, we started uh, creating training programs, um, put them online and sold them. And that was a time when we started recording videos, especially for teaching people. Um, and beforehand, we had different topics um, about calisthenics itself. Um, you can just go on YouTube and take a look at our channel and uh, scroll all the way down um, and you can see uh, which which videos we had in the beginning and um, it was also the time when we started um, giving workshops and teaching people in person and um, I think in, in, in late 2013 we had our first workshop and yeah we had or we got a very good feedback and so we continued doing that um, And with the time, the YouTube channel uh, grew bigger. And I'm not sure if there was uh, this, this, this time when we said, oh, now it, maybe we can go on. Maybe it's getting something uh, big. Um, I think we just did it because it was fun to us and we, we love to produce videos. So it was over the time that it became more realistic to create something big mm -hmm. i think that it sounds exactly the the opposite from from many people today who want who say yeah i want to become an influencer and then they think about uh, where yeah what what kind of content can i produce uh, how can yeah. i do that but yeah. you did it other way around as it as it seems that uh, you just started doing videos of something that you loved and uh, also the video production was fun to you so yeah. it felt natural and not like a professional something right yeah um, a milestone for me just pops into my head when I was, um, I don't know, like it has to be something between 2012 and 14, maybe 15 when I was um, watching television and uh, I was already watching uh, your videos and uh, the, the, in my opinion, the most famous uh, television uh, channel uh, for, for our age, uh, Prozim was uh, like um, showing a, a, a part of your performance at um TV Total, I guess it was, um, yeah. and like this was, I was so proud. I was say, like saying to my, <laughs> to my, to my grandpa, uh, grandfather, yeah, this is my sport. This is what I do. So, uh, was this uh, 
the big milestone or was it just one uh, big step in, in, into the direction where you are today? Um, it was in late 2014 because I think he retired in uh, 2015. And um, it's pretty, uh, pretty crazy because everyone that I talked to um, saw this, this uh, show. Um, but at that time, we didn't really have an impact on social media. So we, there were no, no more views or no more um, subscribers, uh, neither on, on YouTube nor on Facebook. Um, so yeah, in, in, the, in the online world, it, was, it had no real impact. But like I said, everyone knows it or everyone has seen this uh, show. Yeah, like it's it's interesting. That's I didn't expect that. I expect like a big peak uh, uh, at, around this time, but um, I think it had a big impact on the sport. Um, maybe like uh, there were like a, bi a few big players uh, at this time. Uh, there was uh, Baristi who was doing a really good job in in Germany, especially. Um, there there was you, um, and um, yeah, I think like. Um, it, it, in my opinion, it was like a, a, an important step into the, the mass, like into uh, getting calisthenics more known. Yeah, um, yeah. I think um, it, it didn't have that big of an impact because uh, we uh, started doing everything in English. And um, like from the beginning, we had a very big audience in America. Um, and this TV show is a German TV show. And I think in America, no one really knows it or watches it. So because it's in German, of course. <laughs> um, and I, I think that's why we didn't really have an, or had an impact on, on social media. Mm -hmm. But of course, everyone in Germany um, have seen it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Coming back to your, um, to your um, position, like to you as an athlete, um, what people were asking, how long did it take you to, from the first calisthenics workout ever to your first good straddle planche hold? So um, not after training straddle planche and then you achieve it like after one month, two months, even because you have a uh, good foundational strength, but in general, for first calisthenics workout to the first straddle planche. Um. I did my first straddle planche before I did my first calisthenics workout. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I didn't learn it through calisthenics, but um, when I did tricking, um, we tried a lot of different uh, types of exercises and um, the straddle planche or come going down from the handstand into the straddle planche was one thing that I um, practiced. And this was the exact same exercise that Sven saw in this video. Um, because of which he uh, wrote me that mail. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm lucky. Lucky that you already uh, were able to do the straddle planche. Otherwise, maybe, maybe Kelly move wouldn't have been founded. Um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Um, starting with calisthenics, what was your main goal and your main reason to switch? Was it um, to build a nice physique? What were like? Is it the skills or what? What was it? Uh, fun, fun, Simply fun. Because um, at that time, I think I did parkour for like seven years or so, and it was a few months before um, I I had a small injury in the knee because I landed too uh, too deep. And um, I had to, yeah, go back in intensity in the training of parkour. So um, it was a good coincidence that uh, Sven just messaged me. Um, so I had something that really was fun to train. And yeah, that was the reason why I started it, doing it okay. regular on a regular basis. I always have to smile if somebody tells me, yeah, I did this sport and then I hurt my legs and then I was doing, I'm doing calisthenics <laughs> as it's like, as calisthenics is uh, the sport that way you don't need legs. Um, but um, yeah. yeah. But, but it's not that I, I had injuries before, like um, I think in 2009, I had a training and I trained backflips and uh, it was on a, on a small like wall. Um, and I wanted to do do 10 backflips and I did them and 
Then a training partner told me, oh, you have to do 11, you know, <laughs> always one more. And so, and then, then I did the 11th and um, um, failed and I landed sideways with the knee. Mm. And so I snapped over and uh, had a small injury in the, on the inside of the knee. And I was not able to really train my legs for at least six or seven months. Wow. And in, in that time, I trained a lot of handstand stuff and, and jumping and um, on the hands and, and walking upwards and downwards, small obstacles on the hands and so on. So um, it was not like, oh, now I have to find something where I can train my upper body. Mm -hmm. But I always had that thinking, okay, when my feet or legs are hurt, I just train my upper body and mm -hmm. vice versa. Okay, makes sense. Coming to today, um, you're still in, a, in an incredible shape, uh, which I would want to say, like, uh, especially, uh, like, I don't want to say that you're old, but uh, 30, uh, 36 years old for a calisthenics athlete, you don't see that so often. So um, respect for that. And people were interested in how, how do you keep the shape or like, how does your workout routine look like today? Um, it's pretty different. <laughs> um, I It's, yeah, it changes over the time. Uh, sometimes I have um, a training workout routine where I say, okay, now I want to train with this method for like eight weeks or 10 weeks or maybe also six weeks or so. Um, then I do that. Um, then I switch back to uh, an open or free training where I just go in the gym and do some stuff that I think I should do right now. Um, I think th it has to do with the ability to know your body because mm -hmm. of course i know like um day before yesterday i trained this 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 and this so today i can train some other things or maybe the same things because um uh, recovery took place already um so it's not like i i have a um fixed workout routine that i do every day or like a big program it changes very often And the same with the nutrition. Um, we have phases where we um, focus on shredding and trying mm -hmm. to cut back and, and lose fat. Um, and then we, of course, also have phases where we don't really care about, the, about it that much. Um, yeah, because we are also uh, humans only. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like sometimes around uh, Christmas, maybe if you sit down with the family and having social events, It, it might happen that we also say, okay, now we don't have to um, count calories or something like this. Um, we just eat like we want it and, and enjoy it. And then maybe one month later, we start uh, shredding again. And we try to, of course, stay at a certain level all the time. And mm -hmm. we don't try to really get fat. Um, but yeah it, it changes like sometimes we might go above 10 body fat sometimes we go below it differs yeah it's this is really interesting because i think i also talked with uh, sven about this uh, at the fibo 2017 18 something uh, like uh, that you have kind of seasons if i remember right um like content production seasons where you take care that you are like really shredded and that also the content uh, looks good we used to yeah we used okay. to but now it's it's different because most of the uh, videos we uh, shoot inside of our gym ah, okay. like gym and um of course sometimes we travel around and uh do like nine days or ten days of shooting videos in a row and then of course we prepare for this event like mm -hmm. um in early 2020 we were in thailand and um we started preparing like in october 2019 or so so oh. that we come down with a with a fat percentage and mm -hmm. Yeah, really used this this uh, occasion to do a lot of videos. Yeah. Um, do you still like with what kind of mentality do you go into training? Is it your goal to still hit PRs, and do you still hit PRs um, and uh, personal bests, or um, is it like maintenance work? Uh, what is your mindset uh, right now? It also differs because, okay. of course, you you cannot hit a PR and every workout it's not possible um sometimes 
you, you go to the training and you feel not that good and think, oh, I don't really want to train right now. But then in the training, you feel, oh man, it's it works better than I expected. Um, and then it's it's pretty good. And maybe you you um, do something that you haven't done in a, in a while. And um, a lot of times it's only, yeah, maintenance or I wouldn't call it maintenance. I would call it a uh, training uh, focused to reach an end goal or not, not really end goal, but a, a goal somewhere. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you train to reach that goal and to reach that goal, you cannot train the goal itself every time because it would be too much. So um, yeah, you do your training with the method that you use at the time and uh, go towards your goal. Yeah. Is there a general formula if somebody asks you how many uh, days per week should should we train? Uh, like somebody asks how many days per week should we train? Can you generalize it or is it no impossible? It's it's not possible. Um, one of the the um, most important things that I learned in in university and when I studied sports science is uh, it depends. It's the best answer in sports science for most things because there are so many factors that influence that. So you, you cannot say um, for everybody it's the right thing to train three times a week or two times or four times. It depends really because there is a lot of circumstances. Each individual has different uh, different stress levels, different kinds of work, different kinds of um nutrition, different kinds of uh, recovery, like sleep and so on. And it's it's not possible to say you have to train like this and this. And that's that's also um, important to know it. There are different ways and a lot of methods to reach the same goal. And for one person, it, this way works better. And for the other person, this way works better. So it's, it's a lot about um, trying. Um, not maybe trying um, what to do, but trying which method is the best that fits for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to understand and respect this this uh, reply because I, I I know, like I, I can imagine that uh, there are so many factors that influence it. Um, still, we um, have some some questions. For example. Um, somebody is stuck and this is something that I see for a lot of people and also for myself for a long time to be stuck at the tuck planche for a long time and some general advice uh, to to come closer and to unlock the straddle planche. Is there something like a common theme that you see um, amongst athletes? Um, I think um, variation is key and um, sticking to training is key because I also know a lot of people that want to train the planche or want to achieve the planche and um, they train it and train it and then they think maybe after two or three months now th the time should come that I get better but sometimes it needs more time mm -hmm. and um, I think if you if you train for a specific skill the same way over and over again you need change you need variation and um, maybe try some different methods, try some different exercises to uh, increase your strength. Um, and the, the playing that I talked about in the beginning, I think this is a pretty uh, nice way because you don't look at, I have to hold it now for 20 seconds and then rest for three minutes or four. Then I do it again and I do this five times uh, after each other. And then I have to rest for two days and so on like playing around, just do it and then do something else and do it again and do something else and so on. Um, I think it, um, it gives your body a, a very high amount of um, repetition in total. And for skills, in this, uh, especially, it's, it's very important that you repeat it over and over again. Um, you can compare it to playing the piano. Um, have you played the piano already? Uh, I tried, but I wouldn't okay. play. <laughs> Yeah, okay. And how how often did you try it? Uh, five times in my life. All right. <laughs> and how did it sound? 
was it good or uh, awful really? like uh i think uh, i don't know the 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 english word but alemania ancient sounded good but uh <laughs> everything else was <laughs> okay um now if someone practices his entire life to uh really play a very nice piece of music it's not because it's very easy to do but you really need that um repetition and you need to do it again and again and again and uh, yeah learn how to do it right and it's the same way in training skills you, you have to learn it right to do, or you have to learn to do it right and um it's maybe of course it's uh, something about uh, maximum strength but it's also about um controlling your muscles and uh, controlling the uh, interaction between different muscles and this is this needs time so yeah okay. that's why my advice would be variation try to uh, get some variation and keep on training the, the i think it's interesting that you say variation because it's um in my opinion uh, a thing where uh, the the people's opinions differ in the calisthenics scene uh, one coach has a lot of accessory work like a lot of uh, small muscle uh, like in in uh, for calisthenics small muscle in, in bodybuilding you have like you train really small muscles but in like in calisthenics you have also have the face pulls or um i don't know um st stuff that is accessory work and then there are the other the other party which um, mostly focuses on basics and the, the the main exercises so when you say um um variations do you are you also a big fan of accessory exercise for for small muscles or like focusing on, on smaller uh, muscle combinations of course because um your body works as a whole and mm -hmm. not only the, the shoulders or only the pecs um, and so you have to train everything and you have to train the stability of your joints and um, working on those small muscles is nothing else than improving um, the stability of joints so that you really um, are balanced between all those muscles. Like you never have a muscle, uh, like only one muscle that is affecting a joint. You always have several muscles like uh, agonists and, and antagonists. And um, they have to be in some kind of balance so that you don't hurt yourself. So okay. I think that's very, very important, yeah. Um, also talking about different muscle groups, um, questions also appeared, um, how to combine, for example, planche and front lever training. The, the, the over, um, watching question is how to combine different skills in, in one training split. Like, um, is there for, especially for skills, for statics, um, is there like a training split that you would recommend? Um, yeah. Um, It's, it's similar to the other question uh, where I answered that it depends <laughs> because um, of course we have also training programs in which we um, included those, pro, uh, those, those exercises mm -hmm. and um, we tried to combine different methods in those training programs. Like maybe in, in one phase you train for four weeks in one specific way and in next, um, next phase you train in another method. So um, it's the same, like, um, try what works good for you. Um, and then, uh, yeah, try as, as many methods as possible and, and see what fits the best for you. And maybe it's also this variation uh, that uh, gives you uh, some, yeah, some improvement itself. So you can try to do... Um, antagonistic uh, sets for example but you can also try to only work um, push exercises one day then uh, pull exercise the other day you can uh, vary the training in frequency you can vary in uh, volume and so on As there are many things that you can do and it's pretty hard to to give a exact answer do this and that and mm -hmm. then it works Okay, so your general advice is really to build a connection to your own body and to um, start feeling your own body and then changing and trying different things until you have the proven method for you. Yeah, definitely. And um, it also depends on, on where you are at mm -hmm. when you start training because some people are weak like in, in, the, uh, in the lats, some people are weak in the core or maybe in the 
I don't know, in the shoulders, some people are weak in other parts. So yeah, it's hard to say um, everyone should do this. In our training programs, we still use different things because we brought people there over a long time. Like um, we start uh, training front lever uh, and, and planche like in, in level four of our complete calisthenics program. Um, and before they should do like three other levels and, and one level is uh, 19 weeks of training. So they have a lot of time to build up the strength and build uh, like, like the foundation for it. Mm-hmm. And in the other levels, we have um, pre-exercises for that, like maybe a planche lean or so that you start giving the, the body uh, some kind of distress that uh, a planche gives. Mm-hmm. And so that you can um, yeah, adapt to the to the exercise in a, uh, on a long term, and I think this is very very important. Like look look at uh, Olympic gymnasts; they don't train like they don't start like at twenty, and then they are like with twenty five at the Olympics. Mm-hmm. They start with five years, four years, six years, something like this, or maybe even earlier, and they build their way up step by step in a slow manner and this is important interesting for you um what was personally the the hardest skill for you to to unlock and to learn um did you have any anything that was really difficult for you or where you had a lot of challenges um for me in general um pull exercises are harder to do than push exercises so um I had some struggle with the front lever Mm -hmm. and uh, right now I'm not really able to do it um, because I didn't train it for a long time because I I had other priorities. Um, Yeah. But there was a time when I was able to do it like for a few seconds, Um, but I always struggle with pulling exercises. And this falls down to genetics, um, the the um, focus on pull or push, or what is your opinion on that? I don't know. I think it it also um, plays a role how you moved in the in the past. Like mm-hmm. if you did a lot of maybe more pushing stuff and less uh, pulling stuff, it might be an, an factor that influenced that. Um, but I can't give you an answer what the, the exact reason for that is. It mm-hmm. might also be that uh, like like um, the, the levers of your arms and the biomechanics of your body are maybe better in one person and worse in another person. But I'm not sure if that's completely everything. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's like a, a, um, a synergy of both because if something is easy for you, you make progress quicker. If you make progress quicker, it's more fun and then you focus on it Absolutely, more. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And it, might, it, sound, yeah, it might be, I'm sure. As it sounds like you and your uh, parkour history also did a lot of uh, groundwork, like uh, handstands and uh, yeah. jumping on. And this builds like extreme shoulder and push um, strength. So, But with the climb up, we also did a lot of pulling exercises. Yeah, true. So, um, Parkour was pretty pretty balanced, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course, with the climb up, you always had your legs that also push you up, mm-hmm. and um, you never had that pulling only from your arms and back. So, yeah. true. Um, are you interested in ever learning like extreme advanced um, skills like uh, Maltese and Hefesto, or like the 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 I would call them fancy uh, street workout moves? Um, in the beginning, I was kind of, um, but at at the moment right now, I'm not anymore because, of course, we are getting older all the time and it doesn't get easier. I wouldn't say it's impossible, but um, for us, it's also right now not, not anymore this kind of playing and fun. It's it's a job. Mm-hmm. Like we have to produce our videos and we want to we want to. Uh, give new uh, new material to the people. And if we get hurt by training too hard or too uh, extreme skills, um, it wouldn't be that good because we were not able to continue doing these videos all the time. Yeah, totally so it's understand. More important, it's more important for us to produce videos and um, teach people about 
yeah, how they should uh, use their bodies. And that's extremely important to understand, I think, because there was also like I also read one or two questions, uh, comments under the video with uh, Daniel from Fitness FAQs, where people were also saying that uh, he's not the strongest athlete, and yeah, I'm stronger than him, and it's really about focus. And I think people can't imagine the the day and the the um, challenges that come with being like a professional content producer, um, and to that this is your main focus. It's not your main focus to win the FIBO. Uh, competition next year um but to to be the best in in your profession in your area and um you can't do everything in life this is also something that right. uh maybe as a, as a as a adolescent or young young uh, person we we don't understand that um we can't do everything but i think the the older we get the more we have to decide in which direction we want to go and where we want to fo put our focus in because You also have your family, you have like your other stuff. Um, and this is, um, it also takes time. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, what, uh, what I connect with you is also, um, extreme, um, like mobility on the one hand, but also, um, leg, uh, leg strength. Um, so, um, uh, what is your opinion about leg training? Uh, there's always the question, does it, uh, slow down my statics, um, statics progress, your opinion in general about leg training and calisthenics? Um, if you take a look at biomechanics, I would say, yes, it, it can um, make it harder for you to do several skills. Like, of course, planche and front levers and so on are harder to do if you have bigger muscles in your legs and glutes. Um, I wouldn't say it's, it's impossible, but it, it gives you a harder time. Um, And my strength mainly comes from my uh, martial arts background mm. because we trained a lot of um, legs back then. Um, I did uh, Taekwondo for like 14 years. Oh. And it, it's, it's mostly about kicking. And it was also the start of, of my tricking career, I would say, <laughs> if you can call it like this. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a lot of, about jumping and, uh, yeah standing on legs and or like on one leg and raising your your legs pretty high and so on and i think this this has a big influence on my mobility on the on one hand and on the leg strength on the other hand as well and you never train like with extreme heavy weights uh your your legs right you do mostly body weight if i'm right Yeah, it depends on what extreme body weight uh, or <laughs> extreme weights are for you. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think my my one RM in squats is like 140 kilo or something like oh. this. So it's not very very high. Like there are people that are doing like two times the amount <laughs> or even more. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think my connective tissue is also not the 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 hardest one. It's like very very mobile, and that makes um, that I'm pretty mobile in general. Mm -hmm. And so um, maxing out the weights in total wouldn't be the best option for me, like for my body. So I was not able to do it, and I never had the goal to do this, something like this. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel in some exercise that you that your legs uh, and is are are too too heavy and too big? Um, I think you don't feel it, but if you think about it, it might be the case. Yeah, I think some some things would be easier, like front lever, for example, mm -hmm. um, if my legs were thinner. Okay. Um, If somebody wants to build strong legs but not big legs, is ex the explosive work um, that you do, like with a lot of uh, jumping and, uh, like, oh, of course, your your um, how is it called, like fighting uh, background, uh, combat sports um, background, um, is this the right way, or um, what would you recommend to somebody who wants, still wants to have like a healthy, strong legs but not still want to progress quick at front lever and full planche and whatever? Um, I think the best way is to. Um train for strength and control um like not maybe uh doing heavy squats and so on um but doing stuff like like pistols or um yeah things like that maybe jumping jumping on, on one leg and so on um 
I think that would be a good way, but I think especially the um, the legs are also some kind of um, yeah given from your genetics. Like mm -hmm. if you are a very skinny person, you will tend to have skinnier legs. If you are a athletic person or maybe a bigger person, um, you will tend to have uh, bigger legs. You genetically you, you have bigger legs. I think so. Yeah. I, I was, I never had any kind of very skinny legs, so okay. I can't remember. Okay. Um, yeah, speaking of legs, uh, you are also wearing uh, your blue shirts, which you are no known for. Um, and we also had a lot of questions uh, before it's uh, for, for the, for the blue shirts. Uh, what is the story behind the blue shirts? Shorts. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um It came from uh, YouTube comments, I think. Um, I liked the, the, the blue shorts when I got it first um, because I liked the color and um, I always uh, wore the, the blue shorts in, in all of the videos. And it um, became something like a, a, yeah, like a, how do you say that? Like something where you can recognize people with. Yeah. So, um, And then in the beginning, uh, in the beginning, it started with the comments on YouTube, and uh, which said uh, he's only strong because of those uh, shorts and so on, and then he's mobile because of the shorts and so on. Because I always wore them in the videos, and I never changed. Um, and I think this is the way that it started. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, everybody who wears this short, these shorts, uh, can become strong and mobile. That's what. <laughs> Nice, and uh, yeah, I'm uh, like at this point we can we can announce the the project uh, which we've been working on in the in the past month and even like over a year I think it is, um, because we've uh, we've been working on on these blue shirts uh, to to make them accessible and make the the strength accessible to everyone out there. Um, we've been working on the blue shirts as a collaboration between Kelly Move and Coronation, and uh, yeah, from today on. People can uh, can get it. Uh, the link is in the bio, and uh, people can can unlock their their full potential with the with the blue shorts uh, shorts. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's something that I'm really happy to do um, with you. And uh, I think it's a really cool pro project. Yeah, absolutely. I really like it. Sure. Um, yeah. Another question. Um, I well, I had to smile when I saw this. Uh, why are you bald? Uh, this was uh, also a question that some of you uh, asked uh, in the in the Instagram survey. Um, what is your your response to that? Um, because I shave my head <laughs> <laughs> every time, um, and I started shaving my head with about 16 or 17, something like this, when I was in school, and um, I had longer hair before, um, but. Even as a kid, I always had the most of, of the time very short hair. Um, and I think it's the, the kind of hair that fits the best to me. And um, I also think it's pretty easy to handle. Um, when I had longer hair, it was like until here or something like this. And yeah, you, you have to care more about your hair. And it's, it's an additional task you have to do um, on a regular basis. So um i wouldn't uh, want to grow hair again right now um and yeah like from then i i had the bold the bold uh yeah like head <laughs> <laughs> and um with the time i also lost some hair on top here so um it fits pretty pretty good um but it was not a reason because I, or why I started shaving my hair. Okay. Um, yeah. D like I would, I would love to see the, the, the picture of you with long hair. I can't imagine at all at all. Um, maybe this will be yeah. one, one viral post um, of Kelly moves Instagram uh, in a, in a few days. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> if there are any existing pictures out there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I would say the same if I would be you, but um, yeah, we, we all know that there is a picture and maybe we can go uh, search it on the, on the internet. Um, 
Yeah. One question that I had uh, also um, is, um, yeah, uh, did you lose your hair because of steroids? And um, do, you, do you have an opinion on that? Do you get asked that frequently or, yeah? Um, we don't get asked that frequently, but um, especially in the beginning, we had a lot of comments um, of people that said they have to use steroids and so on. But um, we never used any steroids. If we did, we would also say it because I think it's nothing about it, especially in today's world. Um, and it's a personal opinion. Like um, for me, it's not worth it to take it um, because on one hand, I won't be that proud um, of myself if I use steroids because it's much easier to achieve a good physique. Of course, you have still have to train and train very hard, um, but you can unlock some some yeah, a way to train harder or much harder and, and more frequent than you would be able to do without it. And um, yeah, I, I also uh, don't want to uh, live with the consequences. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of uh, known consequences of the use of steroids. So it's not worth it to me. Of course, I respect if uh, anyone out there says he wants to use it or she, um, but yeah, it's not, it's not for me. I understand. And also with your uh, Maltese and injury uh, question, you also show that you are really looking long-term and uh, also for health and um, yeah. respecting your, um, yeah, your, your longevity and career of, of Kelly move and yeah, steroids wouldn't fit into, into this uh, yeah, theme, right. I think. I think it's not worth it to have a few short moments where you can really live up um, and to pay for that with a, f a very long time that you are down. So I, I um, prefer having a very long time where you are healthy and uh, feel good naturally um, and yeah, really can be proud of yourself because you, you achieved uh, some special or specific results. Mm -hmm. And it's also nothing that is impossible to do. Like it's it's a lot of uh, a lot about nutrition and some training. And if you mix that together in the right way, almost everyone would be able to achieve, achieve um, similar looks. Mm -hmm. Um, I think also connected to your uh, to your hairstyle, I think the the name LX um, uh, was created, or maybe you can tell us the story behind it. Uh, maybe it, it doesn't even have to do something with it, and I completely <laughs> mis under, uh, misinterpret it. But yeah, what's the what's the history and um, the, the background? It has nothing to do with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I think I um, came up with the name in like. 2013, something like this, um, when or maybe even earlier, I'm not sure. Um, when I started uh, with or being on Facebook, um, and I thought there are so many Alexes in the world. It's 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 not something spe special if you if you will call yourself Alex, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I was looking for another way to write it. And in the beginning, I had another way of writing LX, like L and X, like the, the mm -hmm. X to cut uh, trees. Mm. And um, yeah, then someday I switched to LX, like it's written now. I'm not sure why. I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it was just the time for it. I'm not sure. And then uh, later people came up with, oh, it's, it's, it's X, which is called like, uh, it means balls and so on. And yeah, but okay. that's totally fine for me. Um, there's only one uh, Alex in the world and that's, that's more, more important to me <laughs> um, than yeah, people not laughing about it or saying things about it. Okay, because uh, like subconsciously, I always thought Alex is because um, of your hairstyle like because it looks uh, not too offensive uh, but uh, like <laughs> because of it looks uh, like an egg a little bit yeah. this is why i was thinking l egg like i don't know yeah. um but um yeah never mind well, it's it's not a, <laughs> it's it's totally fine and it's not a, the true story and yeah there were other people before that also said said the same thing that you say um 
but it shows that people think about you and that people make their right. thoughts and uh, that you uh, yeah gave some uh, yeah that you take some uh, some some how to say some uh, interest from people so yeah, yeah. Um, people asked somebody asked from the community where did you get all your knowledge about calisthenics how did you become the knowledgeable teacher uh, person coach uh, workshop giver inspiration uh, that you are today so where did you get the um, knowledge from? I studied sports science uh, here in Leipzig in my hometown. And you learn a lot about the, the general or the basics about training. And you can apply those basics, of course, to each sport. Like you think about the biomechanics, you think about um, how it would make sense in a, in a training methodology to reach specific goals and then you simply simply <laughs> apply it to the sport you want to apply it to so um i did exactly that um my um um how do you call it the the exam exams mm -hmm. like the, the the final the final work that you do for your studies um i wrote about parkour mm -hmm. and i did the same thing like there was nothing back then about parkour whatsoever and i just made up my mind and thought about how would it make sense to train specific techniques in parkour and then i created ways to split up the techniques like the, the final product split it uh, in, in uh, part movements and uh, yeah bring a, a practitioner step by step to the goal and it's it's nothing else in in calisthenics like you think about the bi biomechanics and combine it with the training methodology and then you have the product cool. of course it's not that simple but <laughs> yeah um, it's it's the the basic way to go uh, you would do the same again right if you would uh, have the yeah. the end goal of becoming a coach um you would recommend it to someone of course yeah cool um, did you have any severe injuries in your career? Um, nothing severe. Like um, a few pains here and a few pains mm -hmm. there. But like in, in 2015, I was out of training because I overused my brachioradialis. Mm -hmm. I guess from doing too many pull-ups. Um, and it took me very long to really uh, recover it. And finally, in the beginning of 2016, I started doing mobility and only did that, like only mobility training for like three or four months. And that was the final thing that really worked for me. Like I did everything else before, like massage, like stopping training for a few weeks, like or even months, mm -hmm. um, getting back slowly into training and so on, doing some um, physiotherapy. But um, finally, mobility training was the key for me. Okay. So your advice for injury prevention also for the people out there would be mobility. Um, anything else? Um. Yeah, um, trying to not create imbalances. Mm -hmm. I think this is pretty important. And I think mobility is a very good way to achieve that. When you speak of imbalances, uh, do you speak about left and right or like pull and push? Uh, what kind of imbalance? Every kind of imbalance. Like okay. it's it's not good if you have an, a, a lower left, a weaker left side than your right one or a, a weaker antagonist um than the agonist of course there are always um differences like it's not that every um agonist is as strong as the antagonist but it has to be in the in the, in the right balance mm -hmm. so yeah i think you shouldn't train in a, in a specific way that you only uh, train for pull strength or only for push strength or never train legs or never train like rotation in your torso and so on there are uh, it's, I think it makes sense to really uh, have everything in your workout if possible, like if the yeah. time allows you to do that. <laughs> True. Okay. Um, your opinion on supplements, <clears throat> like uh, do you take any creatine, whey, 
whey protein whatever um it's like our nutrition um it diff um changes mm -hmm. um so when we cut down we of course tr uh, take supplements um and we try to not take too many like I mean, there is, there's a supplement for almost everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you really want to do it correct, you should t uh, do a blood test and, and see what the levels of the specific things that you want to take are. And if you have a very low level, it would make sense to supplement it. Um, but I think um, for a regular, healthy, fit person, it's not not necessary um it makes things easier in my opinion especially if you uh, talk about whey protein um because if you have a specific goal and you need a very high pro protein intake um it can be difficult to eat that much and like in chicken for example you have about 22 grams of protein in 100 grams of uh uh of chicken mm -hmm. and of course to reach like two grams of, of protein per, uh, per kilogram of your body you really have to eat a lot so and in, in protein you have like 90 percent of the weight as proteins so it's much easier to reach the values um yeah so i think it's it makes things easier and i still think you should not rely only on supplements Mm -hmm. Like fix your nutrition so that you eat healthy and um, as good as possible uh, without any non-processed foods. Mm -hmm. It's not totally possible, but um, like try to cut them out as, as good as possible. Um, and if necessary, and if you want to have it a little bit easier, then of course you can use supplements. Cool. What are your goals right now with Kelly Move and also a personal um, to, to sum up this interview a little bit? Uh, what can we expect in the next weeks and months from you? Um, yeah. Um, of course, we focus on uh, continuing with our, our YouTube channel. Right now, we started trying YouTube Shorts, and I think it's a very good way to present small and easy topics in an in a, in a easy way. Um, so we will experiment with that a little bit. Then um, we are working on new programs. Like uh, right now, we are working on a new mobility program. We cannot say definitely when it will be done, but we try to finish it until the early 20, 2022. Um, yeah, but sometimes, of course, you know how it is. There are... <laughs> things that come in the, in, in the way and um, yeah, that make you need some more time. Um, other than that, I work on uh, improving my editing skills mm -hmm. and yeah, learning new things uh, about filming and editing. And yeah, we want to keep our level or like our level of, uh, of, of, editing and uh, video content or even improve it yeah and i think you're doing an awesome job in improving it uh just uh, five minutes before the interview uh, i saw the the graphic that you did the video that you just posted with the um mobility level that uh in the in the back mm -hmm. uh, which was a really nice uh a really nice graphic so um yeah good job on that in, in general there is a big big progress in, in the in the past years um yeah. small story that i want to tell um in 2013 i was starting with calisthenics and i had like um Uh, I did always did the the mat bars routines, which was uh, mm -hmm. back then the go to to uh, to start. And um, I had some some shoulder pain doing um, a knee raises and leg raises and stuff like that. And I was writing to the uh, Instagram page from Kelly Move 2013 14, and I was so happy that I received a, a reply, which was really. Um, 
helping my my problem which was the, the active hang that i didn't hang an active hang back then and this is why i had pain so uh, yeah big thanks for that and uh, i really um think it's extremely respectable and um important for the sport uh, with the work that you do you influence like really uh, deeply uh, you influence people deeply around the world and this is something that um yeah you're doing extremely well and i want to say thank you in the name of the sport um uh, that you do this yeah. <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> nice um yeah we're close to the end of the interview we always have some quick que questions quick answers at the end of the video um first question what is your favorite food i like a lot of foods so There's nothing popping up in my mind right now to say it. that's the most important thing that I really like. Um, there are a few things. Okay. Maybe we say. should call this interview, It Depends, uh, because yes. this, this, <laughs> <laughs> this seems to be the, 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 the answer to everything. Uh, right. Are you a dog or a cat person? Neither. Okay. I, I had cats when I was younger, mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't get a dog and i wouldn't also get a cat right now okay uh what is your favorite color blue blue okay i was expecting that uh <laughs> do you have athletes that inspire you uh, out there um i was a huge fan of bruce lee when i did martial arts mm -hmm. and i think um, he's still a very very uh yeah good athlete um other than that I think there are so many good athletes. It's it's hard to say there's only one that's really good. I I respect a lot of uh, good uh, athletes, and I like that people always try to do something on top of the last like record. Mm -hmm. So people try to push the limits further and further, and yeah, that's that's really nice true i just have to think uh, of the interview with uh, daniel from fitness faqs uh, where i also asked him that and he uh, said a, a reply that i never would have expected and he said like uh, an athlete that really inspires him the athlete is uh, is vitali feshuk um and this was like uh, such a like he's the the complete opposite with his training method etc than, mm. than daniel so um yeah i was expecting some something crazy but um yeah <laughs> it's okay bruce lee is cool um yeah. <laughs> Um, what would you prefer if you have to choose uh, a good body and or uh, great skills? <laughs> Hard to tell. <laughs> um, both. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, the look is is pretty important too, um, because of course you you look in the mirror every now and then and it's it's very nice to see that you have uh, success with the things that you do of course on the other side you are also pretty proud if you can do very good st skills i think it's it's uh, both important on different levels okay so in other words it depends but uh, yeah <laughs> i didn't <laughs> uh do you have a favorite skill skill mm-hmm um yeah planche i would say or handstand push-ups is also pretty nice okay cool uh yeah pull or push push you already said it and like with planche and uh, handstand push-up it's quite obvious um or would it you... be better for you if i say legs <laughs> <laughs> uh no can we skip this um then yeah, of course. <laughs> Do you have a favorite book that uh, you want to maybe recommend? Um... Um, I really don't read that much. Um, when I read something, it's like papers, science papers, mm -hmm. or um, I listen a lot to, to audio books. But um, to me, reading, I, I re never really liked it. And, and to me, it's a waste of time. And when I listen to audio books, I also always do it when I drive with a car. Mm -hmm. and try to combine two things at the same time. <laughs> yeah. um, maybe sometimes it's not that good of a quality, to, uh, the things that you repeat but uh, or remember, better said. Um, yeah, but there's no, no book in my mind right now that I would say that's absolutely great. 
Okay. Can we maybe expect one day uh, a book from you, from you two? Um, <clears throat> we already had different offers for writing a book. Um, but until now, it was not the right time. And we had too many other things that we would or that we said are more important than writing a book. Um, so right now, I would say no, but mm -hmm. I would never say no <laughs> on the other <laughs> hand. It depends, yeah. Um, favorite, yeah it depends. Uh, <laughs> favorite music genre? Um, rap, rap and hip-hop. Cool. But I also like dubstep sometimes. Okay. Uh, best calisthenics event so far? I don't really have an, a good overview of which calisthenics events are out there because I'm not very interested in those things. Mm -hmm. um, I remember back in the days in like 2013 or 14, there were a few competitions and um, I, when, when I was training parkour, I um, started to not like competitions too much. Mm -hmm. um, because in, in parkour, it was all, always the like the idea to not compete with others, but compete with yourself. And you mm -hmm. don't need a competition to do that. So um, try to uh, compare your, your performance to your younger you and not to the other guys sitting next to you. Makes sense. Um, yeah, the final question of the day. Uh, what's your message to the calisthenics community? What's maybe something that you want to tell the listeners? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Stay active all the time. Stay safe and train or think about a long-term training and not because you want to reach something that you want to reach it like in the next two weeks or so. But um, yeah, train slowly and progress step by step. Cool. Alex, thanks a lot uh, for your time. I know you're, you're, you're a welcome. busy person and I'm really happy that we made this possible. I think it uh, delivered a lot of insights and uh, value um, to the people. And um, yeah, I think it's quite obvious, but I still want to uh, ask the question, where can people find you? Uh, where can they get in touch with you? And uh, yeah. If you like our videos, <laughs> you can find our programs on kellymove.com. Yes, so we will put all the links in the description to the YouTube channel of Kelly Move, uh, to the, 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 uh, the, the online shop and the, the homepage with the plans. And uh, yeah, big thank you again uh, before you yeah. can end the episode and say goodbye to everyone. I want to say thank you to everyone listening to this till the end. It's been a long interview again. I'm extremely happy for everyone listening to this till the end. I'm extremely happy for your time, Alex. It was really a pleasure. And uh, if you want to support this series, give it a thumbs up. It helps a lot. And uh, yeah, Alex, you can end the episode. Thanks again. All right, then thanks as well and stay strong all the time. Bye-bye.